Today we will be discussing elemental Lewis dot structures. Lewis dot structures are going to be a very easy and simplified representation of an atom. It is only showing us two things. We have the element symbol, which is directly off of the periodic table, and then we have uh, dots around that symbol that are going to represent our valence electrons. How we're gonna draw the Lewis dot structure is really easy as well. We're gonna just write the symbol directly from the periodic table, and then we'll use the column number with the A on top to tell us how many valence electrons or dots that we have to uh, actually draw around the symbol. Um, we do have to draw the dots in a proper fill order, but the fill order is actually pretty intuitive and not that big of a deal. Uh, to learn. Uh, special note about those dots, if I have uh, two dots on the exact same side, I am going to call those a lone pair. If I have multiple pairs, then I will call them lone pairs with an S. Not that big of a deal. Okay, so here we have a uh, simplified periodic table. You'll notice that the transition elements have been kind of uh, snuffed out of my periodic table here, but that is okay. We just need to go ahead and fill in these. Now you'll notice here we have an example Lewis dot structure. You'll notice inside of the actual circles we have numbers. This is the order in which you draw the circles for elemental Lewis dot. So my first dot goes here, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. You'll notice I'm going in a clockwise direction and I am trying to leave the electrons alone for as long as possible before I force them to be in a lone pair. Now we'll go ahead and we'll do one element from each of uh, my columns here just so that we can see how that would look. So my first element I'm going to draw is just going to be lithium. Lithium is in column one, so that means I'm going to have one dot above lithium. Next, I will draw beryllium. Beryllium is in column two, so that means I need one, two dots for beryllium. Next, I'll just go ahead and I'll draw boron. Boron is in column 13 here, but uh, on our star periodic table, it will be referenced as 3A. And so we're in column three, so we need one, two, three dots. Then we have carbon, who's in column four, so I'll draw one, two, three, four. So now I have one dot on each side. And now I'm gonna actually have to start counting lone pairs. So after carbon, I will have nitrogen. Nitrogen will be in column five. So I will have one, two, three, four, five dots for nitrogen. Fill order is important. Make sure that you're going in a clockwise direction and you're trying to minimize the number of lone pairs that you do end up having. And then we have oxygen. Oxygen is in column six, so I will have one, two, three, four, five, six dots for oxygen. Two lone pairs. Next so we have fluorine, who's in column seven, so I will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dots. Lastly, I have neon, who we see up there as our uh, exemplar but we'll go ahead and draw neon again. So we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're done.